these two things can come together? How are we going to bridge those gaps? How are we going to make things equal, right? You guys know what the secret recipe is? It's easier than you think. You just do it in you. And then it catches on like a contagion, right? You can make the things equal in you, then people will see you like a martyr, and they'll go, oh my god, that guy's so rad! And then they, they'll start to do it too, right? It spreads like a disease. So we're going to think about, and you really have to think about it, don't cheat, the worst thing you ever did in your whole life. <laughs> Everybody knows what it is! You guys all know the worst thing you ever did, ever. The stinkerest stinker. And you're going to think about it. And you're going to put your name on it. I want you to think about that thing, and then I want you to, like, in your head, write your name all over it. Pee on it, claim it. <laughs> do whatever you need to do, but I want you to not take that thing out of you. Because it's... I'll tell you where you guys can find it. You can probably find it contained in a little plastic bubble wrap, shoved somewhere, like maybe under your kidneys or your womb or your stomach or somewhere in your intestines. You guys hold that little thing away somewhere in there. So just kind of like drop a fishing line down there <laughs> and scooch it up a little bit. You can put it in your heart if you want. Your heart has way more room than you think it does, so it can hold it in there. So think about the worst thing ever that you ever did. Did you, did you guys all get it already? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to take a minute and we're going to think about it. I know I'm totally momming out right now. <laughs> Maybe it's a couple of things. You guys have like three horrible things? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm just saying three. It's not like I have three or anything. But um, you can pick however many you're comfortable with. We're doing it now, we might as well do it. Don't cheat yourself, do it. Get them all in there, roust them. things you do are so part of you, right? There you little black snake, you don't want to let out. You guys can talk about them too sometimes if you want, but don't get whiny, nobody likes whiners. If it's appropriate, you can bring them up sometime now that you've fished them out. And now we're going to think about the raddest thing you ever did. Everybody has something so good that they did this one time, right? Everybody, even if it's to when you were a kid, still count, right? Maybe there's a couple great, truly great, something that you did that was like a hero. There was like a superhero where you felt for a second like you were like, divine, right? And you felt pure, total joy. You guys all had that moment? I hope so. And squish that right in your heart next to the horrible thing that you did. Hit right smack dab next to it. Make it hold its hand. Make it give it a little hug. <laughs> Two. You can just get all up in each other. Together.
Because you guys know how we make slaves of people? We'll demonize them. That's how we do wars, too. It's a good trick. They'll say, oh, that person's evil. Or that's a bad person. That person's not a person. That's one of those people. Those people aren't people. That's how it, that's how it goes. That's how it works. That's the trick that they do to make this go. So if you can see another person for only the worst thing they ever did, I know a lot of us do that to our exes. <laughs> it's so easy, right? You're like, oh, that fucker. He's evil. So bad. That's why I can hate him now. And why it's okay that he doesn't live, love me anymore, because he's a demon. <laughs> no, no, no. Remember the awesome things that they do, too. Because it's so easy once you, like, get your feelings hurt. You're like, oh, the demon, the demon. Oh, but wait, he bought me ice cream a lot. No, he's evil. <laughs> but sometimes he was nice. No, it's over. It's done. All right? Keep both the parts together. Make your snake one snake. Okay? Because... If we split the snake, you know, it starts to happen, then we think it's okay to hurt people, and it's cool to make them slaves. So you have to, in yourself, keep the horrible things that you do. Because if you don't, they go into your intestine, and then you just project them on somebody else. Oh, you did this horrible thing. It wasn't me. Right? You can project them onto your ex-boyfriends or girlfriends. Now they are evil and you are not. You can project them onto another country. You can project them onto anyone you want. But if you keep them for yourself, then you win. Because then you're a whole snake and you're not trying to slither around like half of a snake. Right? So I want you guys to take both of those parts that you just made your worst part and your best part. And the hardest part is you have to keep those with you. Keep them with you. Right? Because you know what's going to happen? They start to go, oh, I don't like that guy, so I'm going to go back in here. <laughs> right? You'll forget. You disconnect. You get apathetic. And then you remove yourself from the situation. And then suddenly you have a slave you don't care. So think you can make just a little pod. Whenever you start to get sketchy on anybody, go into your little pod with your name on it, on the terrible things that you do. And then you're going to be one person. It's like Luke Skywalker when he goes into the tree and he sees Darth Vader. Right? <laughs> you guys can do that more often. You're not going to be so freaked out when you go inside yourself and there's a Darth Vader in there. You're not going to be freaked out when your hand is a Darth Vader hand. Because you're going to go, oh, that's the Darth Vader hand that I need when I did that thing. Right? Don't burn yourself. But do. I know, totally. So, you got to look at your Darth Vader hand as often as possible. Right? So that Darth Vader hands don't come and grab you around your neck when you're not looking. So that's what we're going to think about on this equinox. Think about putting your Darth Vader hands on your hands. And shake people's hands with your Darth Vader hands. <laughs> right? Just keep it in the open. You can even say, I'm an asshole. <laughs> right? Why not? It saves a lot of time. <laughs> so if anybody else has anything they'd like to share or think about you're certainly welcome to pipe up I anybody? had two patients that were slaves you had what? two patients that were slaves how were they slaves? they were from Ethiopia they applied for oh a they were real slaves yeah they were from Ethiopia they applied for jobs in Saudi Arabia and one was a regular she was like a house slave, and the other one was a sex slave for mm -hmm. one of the sheiks. And I met him in um, a, a free clinic on Beverly Boulevard. 
But the real slaves are still here. In L.A. Here. There yeah. are slaves in L.A. Still here. Yeah. They ran away in, when, they were, when they were visiting New York. They ran away. They made it over here. There's actually an underground slave trade still. Wow. It's yeah. not even so underground. What was that they had in the news, too? Was well, some politician had a sex slave chick, right? That, what was that? You guys know what I'm talking about? Dang, my memory. <laughs> <laughs> this is just recent, where some, like, politician woman got busted and it had something to do with slave trade. In America, like, hanging out, you know? This is, it's still happening. It's still going on. Afghanistan, you know how many of the little girls got sold by their parents in the slavery so they have money? gigantic amounts. Right now, it's probably happening. The second some person is getting sold as a slave. Because of this business. So sick of this business, right? So you got to look at it. What else? Anything else? That, that ridiculous film that, that, that was passed around recently by the CIA about anti-Muslim um, whatever, whatever, I didn't watch it, and I don't encourage anyone to watch it. Uh, it's propaganda, and it's, um, it's bullshit, you know, so it's, uh, stay away from it. It's, it's, it's poisonous. So. We were talking about that, too. Um, Chastity was mentioning she doesn't understand why he wasn't arrested as a terrorist. Yes, exactly. It yes. makes no sense. You can get arrested for being a terrorist if you have something funky in your shoe at the airport. <laughs> and yet this man, who actually is a terrorist, has still torn on. He has, what does he face? Criminal charges? Nothing? nothing. Anything? Nothing. Well, nothing. I think he's actually being protected and in hiding. Uh, yeah, he's in hiding. Yeah, he's, he's being protected. Yeah. Listen, you, you got to look at this snake, man. The thing is, cool. I, I know a lot of Muslims. I'm Muslim myself. And I, I don't, I don't, you know, I, it, it's absurd, the thought that, the entire country, the entire, you can't blanket anything. A good friend of mine is um, a singer for a band, and she makes blankets, but you can't blanket. <laughs> you can make them, but you can't fucking blanket the society, philosophically. So philosophically, uh, people are ca making categorical error errors in their thought process. Absolutely. You cannot blanket society with Muslims. So I'm a Muslim. Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Only a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Recently, I was having a riff with someone that I work with on a daily basis, and I couldn't figure out what it was, like how to make it better. And someone, an outsider, objectively sort of challenged us both to think about it metaphysically, because we both like each other, but for whatever reason, we represent two opposite sides of a spectrum, like our, both of our snakes just don't get along at all. And so the challenge was to look at it metaphysically and to think of what was, what did the universe, why are we in each other's lives? Like to figure out the balance ourselves, to challenge ourselves as to what was it in them that represents something possibly in me that like I reject. I always like that. And to me, you know what I do? You guys, it's really easy. You look at nature, okay? I like to think of watering holes in Africa. Like when people think, why is this, why was I brought together with this person? You guys know how it is in nature? You don't get to like pick. You gotta go drink where the lions are drinking. And you gotta drink where there's alligators in the water. And you gotta drink because that's where the water is. That's where everybody goes. Because everybody's here together. It's not like, you know, we all get to be like, oh, I'm just gonna go in this neighborhood and nothing bad will ever happen over here. It's all one big African watering hole and there's <laughs> lions everywhere and there's alligators everywhere and there's like gazelles everywhere and there's pretty things everywhere too and it's all in a big soup. So when we're trying to figure stuff out, like how are we gonna interact and how are we gonna deal with someone who's like an alligator or a lion? Just think about 